Okay, this is a grade 10 physical sciences paper, one question paper, and we are on question 10. So question 10 reads as follows. Two identical insulated spheres, X and Y, suspended by threads from a ceiling are held at a small distance apart as shown in the diagram below. So this is the diagram that they're referring to, and you can see you have sphere X, with a positive charge and you have sphere y with a negative charge you're given the charge on sphere x and they say it's positive 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 18 coulomb and then the statement continues sphere x carries a charge of 4 of positive 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 18 coulombs while sphere y has an excess of 30 electrons so before we can attempt the questions let us try to write down a few takeaways from just reading that entire statement. The first thing we know is that the two spheres, X and Y, are the same size, that is, they are identical. The second thing is that all materials contain positive charges and these positive charges we call them protons and they also contain negative charges and these negative charges we call them electrons when an object and then the third thing is that when an object is neutral it means that it has the same number of electrons and protons and the fourth thing is that this means that positively charged objects are electron deficient. What do I mean by that? I mean that they have a shortage of electrons, meaning that there are more protons in that object than there are electrons. Therefore, sphere X has a deficiency of electrons, hence it is positively charged. The last thing is that negatively charged objects have an excess of electrons. This means that there are more electrons in the object than there are protons. So sphere X, so sphere Y actually has more electrons than it has protons. Hence, it is negatively charged. How would we then be able to calculate the magnitude of charge on sphere why? Well, to be able to answer this question, we have to know the principle of charge quantization and be able to apply it. The principle of charge quantization states that the amount of charge on any, on any object is an integer multiple of the elementary charge E. An elementary charge E is the amount of charge carried by one electron. It has a value of minus 1,6 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. So it has this value. So the charge on a single electron has this value. So we have to be able to know that. This means that the charge on any object is just a multiple of this number. And this is called the elementary charge. But now let us express mathematically the principle of quantization of charge. If you look at the back of your question paper, you're going to come across a formula such as this one. And this is the mathematical representation for the principle of charge quantization. So N over here, as I've shown, is just the number of electrons on that object. And then E is the charge on one electron. We've already talked about it and we called it the elementary charge. And then Q is just the amount of charge. So Knowing this information, knowing this formula, and now understanding the principle of charge quantization, let us now see if we can answer question 10.1. We are now familiar with the formula for charge quantization. And from this formula, we have to now find the, the charge on sphere Y. We know that for sphere Y, we have 30 electrons and the charge on a single electron is nothing but the negative of 1,6 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. And then this is what we're looking for, the charge on sphere Y. To do that, we simply rearrange this equation. And if we do that, we'll find that Q is equal to N multiplied by E. And then 
n is nothing but 30 electrons multiplied by the charge on a single electron and you can just put this in your calculator and you're going to find a value of 4.8 4, 4. multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 18 coulomb and yes now we have found what the charge on sphere y is So now we are told that the two spheres are released. So they were being held in, in position. And upon them being released, they start moving towards each other. And now we must provide a reason as to why is this happening. Remember, if you look at our two spheres, you realize that sphere X has a positive charge, sphere Y has a negative charge. And we know that like, like charges, like charges repel and then unlike charges like this one positive and negative they attract so it's just that force of attraction between the two remember we have two spheres sphere x and y sphere x has a shortage or a deficiency of electrons hence it is positively charged sphere y has an excess of electrons hence it is negatively charged and now initially the two spheres are held at a distance away from each other and then they are released after they are being released they will start moving towards each other because of the force of attraction between the two so we have unlike charges and unlike charges attract unlike this attraction I have a nice handwriting so they will attract each other and now we are told that somehow after touching so imagine this is now the two spheres touching each other so this is after touching each other so x and y after touching they will somehow start moving away from each other and why is that why do you think after touching these two spheres are now moving away from each other to be able to answer that, that question we have to remember that when two conductors are made to touch such as these two spheres over here the total charge on them is shared between the two if the two conductors are identical remember we have identical spheres then each conductor will be left with half of the total net charge what does this mean this means that electrons move away so so electrons will move away from sphere y to sphere x so they will move away where there's an excess to where there is a shortage and after a while after that electron transfer process these two spheres will now have similar charges so they can either be positive both positive or both negative and after that whole process now we have to remember that we said that like charges repel so because there's been a sharing of electrons now the two the two charges repel each other The principle of conservation of charge states that in a closed system or an isolated system, the amount of charge remains the same. So charge cannot be destroyed or created. So when an object, for example, changes its charge, it does not mean that there was a creation of new charge. What that means is that there was just a sort of a charge transfer, as we've seen in our two spheres, a charge transfer from one object to the next but the total net charge remains the same if you look at the back of your question paper you're going to come across a formula such as this one so this is just a mathematical representation of the conservation of charge in an isolated system so remember we had sphere x and sphere y and these two spheres were made to touch so they were attracted to each other initially okay because of the difference in their charge after touching somehow they now repelled each other because the charge on them was now the same so now the question is asking us to determine the charge on each sphere 
So to do that, we simply use that formula. So we have Q1 plus Q2 is the charge on sphere X, Q2 is the charge on sphere Y, and then we just divide the two. And then you can just input this in your calculator and you will come to this value. What does this mean? So this means that the, our two spheres after touching, so you have X and Y, so now both of them are negative and they have a charge of 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb, 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. And like we mentioned, like charges, they go going to repel each other, so they start moving away from each other. So be mindful, there wasn't a creation of a new charge, there was just merely a transfer of it, just keeping up with that principle of conservation of charge or in an isolated system. And yeah, this brings us to the end of our video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already done so, share, and yeah, leave a comment.